our valve spring compressor in here. Now if you have trouble with the actual valve stem sticking in here, you might have to cock everything over with like a pry bar momentarily because that valve stem has to pass through both the washer in this case and the hat. So I have a little harder time than normal. And this is actually, believe it or not, I said it's the easiest part, but this is the, this is the hardest valve in the whole thing to have done for whatever reason. But it's set up and we're screwing it down on top, which as you can see is lifting the spring down here in the bottom. And the reason we're lifting is we gotta lift it high enough to get our hole in sight so we can insert our little pin that keeps this whole thing together. So now you can see there's the little hole under there. And I'm gonna get a pin, the last pin, and I'm gonna insert in that hole. For this, you'll need to have a long nose pliers of some sort. I find the bent ones work a little better for me, but you use whatever you find works best. And you get your little pin in the hole, and you wanna get it centered in there because it's gotta go up inside that hat piece. Now all we're gonna do is just release our valve spring compressor, and eventually we'll be able to pull it out, and the little pin will keep everything together. Okay, now I should be able to pull it out. There we go. And the pin holds it together, and that's the last of the valve springs installed. Now we're gonna show you in a moment a little sketch and tell you what the dimensions on this particular valve spring tool are. In case you want to make one for a gram, mostly what would change is you'd have to use slightly different dimensions for blocks from somebody else possibly. Our little valve spring compressor consists of a side and a bottom, a cutout, I come up the other side, and along here. Nobody says it's going to be great artwork, it's going to be effective though. So this distance right there, we've got it at two and a half. So this is 2.5 inches right in here. This distance, this is a side to side distance right here. So when I look at this, holding it up, side to side distance, we got about an inch and uh, just about an inch and a quarter. I would say an inch and three eighths is probably better because you have a little more room. This distance in here, you have to be able to fit that little hat in. So when you fold your sides up, that's important because the hat portion, move this out of the way, has to sit in here. And you really do need the V cutout. Okay, so this cannot be less than the hat portion in width. You'll know that if you're looking at it. We showed you the part earlier. But let's talk about how wide and how deep this is. So I'm going to set the pen down. i got to hold this so we can look at it. Oh, don't tip over. Hold still. There we are. We're about an inch wide in the front. In the back, we are a half inch, just under a half inch. So... We'd say, eh, seven sixteenths in the back. So let's put that in our drawing here. We're seven sixteenths right here. And we're one inch right there. Then you have a depth here, and that depth that you've got to have in order to make this work is a grand total of Oh, nine sixteenths. So you have nine sixteenths inches in here. That's your bottom, what I'm referring to as the foot. Here is where you're going to attach your post, right in that area. This post, as we told you, which is right here, that post is a 0.5 inches in section. And it's square, okay, you see it's square there. And we've got a bend here. So from the foot, and we have our post, and then we have a bend. Again, this is not great artwork, but it's effective. So the distance from here to here is what we're gonna need now. 
So we're gonna get that distance for you. Distance to the center of the bend is seven inches. So it would be seven inches from here to here. This is seven inches. And that's so I can read it, obviously sideways to you, but that's seven inches from the bottom to the center of the bend. Now from here over, I made it overly long. It doesn't actually have to be that long, but from that edge over it's four and a quarter from this edge to the center of the bend again is four and a quarter. That's what you got here. Now what's really critical is your position Your position right here, you must position this point over the center of the valve. So the thing to do is to make your foot, weld it on, do your bend, put this in place in the engine, and you could get this dimension. Now I'm going to give it to you the dimension, but that's how you would figure it. That's two and three eighths to the center. So your rod is right here. That would be going through the top. This is your threaded rod. This is two and three eighths inches to the center of that bend to the center of the rod again. So we're always working center of the bend when we're talking about these dimensions. Remember your rod, rod equals five sixteenths fine thread. Okay, that's what you want there. At the top, look again, we used a three quarters piece of steel and we made that seven inches long so you have great plenty. If you even need leverage, which you really don't need too much, that'll work great. And then you want to nut top and bottom and you want to thread this hole right here. These are all 5 16 fine thread that we've done. 5 16 fine thread here also. And the drill bit for threading those areas is a letter I drill. That's a letter I drill for threading those areas. So that's how you make up one of these little fit a gram engine. What's going to be different when you're talking about other engines is what dimension you have to have down here in your foot area. That could be different. And what dimension you have going this direction to reach the valve. Those could change if you're making this for another engine. But this particular basic design would work for lots of engines. Now, a bunch of you out there are going to say, well, you could have gone and bought one of these. Well, not in Prescott, Arizona, you can't. They said, well, I can order it for you. Well, yeah, I can order it online, too. Besides the fact an awful lot of the stuff that's made anymore is so cheap, I just decided to make it myself out of stuff I had and make one that's stronger than I'm ever going to need and that fits the Graham engine exactly. And in that I didn't buy this stuff, but even if I just did and it wasn't stuff I just had laying around, I wouldn't be into this thing $10. And it was just a nice little project to make one. Here we have a 1936 style Graham piston. We know that from the information in the pistons and also in the Graham shop manual. One of the things that's different about this piston is there's no split skirt. Split skirt pistons were used in a number of Graham engines. They have a certain way you have to install them. You need to check that in the shop manual. The non-split skirt piston like this you can install either way. There's no specific way. Now, since they've been new old stock from 1936, the piston pin is actually stuck in here because the oil has just gotten hard over time. So we're going to heat this up a little bit with a propane torch and start to get our piston pin out. doesn't take that much heating. Make sure to flip it around and get both sides. Heat it up a bit. We're going to take our penetrating oil, PB Blaster, and shoot a little in here. 
and then we're going to tap this piston pin out instead of not pounding it out, literally just going to tap it out. Alright, now we're going to work on tapping our piston pin out. And we really want to tap and not hammer hard. And it's started to move just slightly. And we're going to give it a little more heat because this one's being a little tough to get out. So we'll heat it up some more. You gotta tap too much, just heat instead. Since I heated it, I'm going to hit it with a little bit more penetrating oil. And you have to sometimes be a little creative in the positions you put the piston in when you're working on it. Not just for showing you, you actually want to get it, so you can get it to come loose. There, I got it a little bit. And you really want to take it all the way out at this point because we're going to properly oil it. Just get it through about that far and I can flip it over this way. There, now it's completely out. So we've got it out. We're going to take our assembly lube oil that we've got in our can and we're going to Put it all the way around each of the openings so that we have enough lubrication in here. Then we're going to take our piston pin and we're going to put it back in. But this is where you need to know something important about Graham piston pins. They have a cut in them. That is to clear the bolt right here. That's what it's for. So it's important how you put it in so you can get to this so you can clear your bolt. This is the reason for the overhaul or the aftermath of a rod failure. Except it wasn't the rod that failed, it was the bolts. As you'll notice, the leftover portions of the original bolts, these are original Graham style bolts, they actually failed. They came apart. And when I took everything out of the oil pan, I found that the heads had come right off. Not only did this ultimately break here, but they, they literally came off. And so I'm just telling you, don't use those original bolts. That's why we're switching to our American Racing Products bolts. They're going to be several orders of magnitude stronger than the original bolts anyway. The original bolts have drilled heads. You don't need to have that with the American Racing Products bolts. They're not going to come undone. They don't need to be safety wired. So I would switch to American Racing Products bolts because you don't want this happening. So this is why there's an overall going on here because those two bolts failed. And they didn't fail at high speed or anything. Just started out accelerating from a stop sign and they failed almost instantly. So they had been going for some time and just decided that was the point to die. Now I'm going to get the American Racing Products package, show you the number you need to buy to fit these rods. Here we have the ARP bolt set. Right here, 200-6209. It's a 3 8 by 1 bolt, but you can see it right here. This is the one, the set you want. Downside is you actually have to buy two sets in order to have the right number because you can't buy them any other way than really technically for V8s. They're set up for V8s. So you're actually going to have more bolts than you need to have, but that's okay. You're going to end up with something that's absolutely going to work. They come with the bolts and the hardened washers. Use the normal torque setting that Graham tells you to use, and everything's going to turn out just the way it should. And for reference, that torque setting 
is right here and it's set at 45 pounds. 45 pounds. And the other thing you're going to need is obviously you need to have this special socket. The interesting thing is the bolt on the bottom is American threads, the socket on the top is actually metric. So it's an interesting socket that you're going to have to pick up. You're using a metric socket, but you have American threaded bolts with a metric top.